How do you go from something cheap and throw away like this piece of plastic here to something that you can keep forever like this brass spinning top? So you might be wondering, how much design experience do you need to do this? What's the cost and how long does it take? In this video, I'm gonna answer all of those questions and take you step by step through the same process that I used when I designed 25 different products and sold over a thousand orders on my Etsy shop with 250 five-star reviews. It's a lot easier than you think. Let's get started. 3D printing is adding material layer by layer and CNC is removing material, a bit like a sculptor would. So you start with a big block of material and you take material away to eventually have your piece. Well, CNC is the exact same way. So there's two main types of CNC that we're gonna worry about. One is a CNC lathe. So if it's round like this, it'll be using a CNC lathe. This is important for later on. And if it's square, you'll be using a CNC mill, which is like a flatbed and you can do loads more crazy geometry. This was made using a CNC lathe and this was made using CNC mill. So when it comes to designing parts for CNC, the good news is no matter how complicated your part is, they'll probably work out how to machine it. They can do some incredibly complicated things. So as long as it's physically possible, the supplier will be able to work it out with you. The bad news is if you send them a complicated part like this, it's going to cost you a hell of a lot of money. So let's have a look at some simple techniques that I've used to reduce my part costs from over 30 and $40 right down to uh, less than $10 per part. So there's two main ways that I go about saving money when it comes to using CNC as a process. Number one is saving money on materials and the other is making the parts as easy and as fast as possible for the supplier to machine. So how do you save money on materials? There's only two real ways of doing it. One is that you use a cheaper material, and two is that you use less material. I know it sounds basic, but those two things can really help bring that part price down. So how can your design actually affect how expensive the CNC is going to be? Well, here are a few techniques that I use uh, that help make my part prices much, much lower and the parts really easy to machine. Number one is that you try and make your design as simple as possible. So remove any complicated surfaces and just keep it to the bare bones, straightforward as possible, and that'll help them speed up their side. The next is to remove any unnecessary features. So if you don't need it to be in there, get rid of it. The less machining and the less detailing that the supplier needs to do, the cheaper the part price is going to be. And finally, going back to that sculpturing example, the less marble that that sculpture needs to remove from the block, the quicker the job can be. So try and visualize that when you're doing your design work. Go backwards from the block of material and try and re remove as little material as possible and still make your design work. So now you understand the basics of CNC machining, we're gonna jump into our CAD software and design the part. In this example, we're just talking about a really simple product, which is this spinning top. So we jump into the sketch panel, we create the sketch, revolve it around, and there we go. First of all, good idea to 3D print this. You just wanna make sure that you've done it the right size in your hand. So once you have your design that you're happy with, you've got to export it as a step file, and that will be useful later on. The fun part of when you have an amazing design that you're happy with and you're 3D printed and it works is choosing the material. So here's my quick guide of my favorite materials to use with CNC machining. Number one, sandblasted anodized aluminium. Yep, yeah, it sounds like a mouthful, but don't worry, the CNC supplier will know exactly what you're asking for. So this is super affordable, easy to machine, lightweight, strong, durable, it's pretty much got everything going for it. The only thing it doesn't have is that nice weight to make something feel expensive. Um, other than that, it's used on loads of amazing products. The old iPod used to use it. Um, generally, it's an amazing process and an amazing material to use, so I'd recommend trying that out. The next is something that when done right can look really premium and have a lovely warm orange glow to it. 
and that is copper. So this product here is done using copper and has an amazing knurled edge to it. Came out looking really good. It's pretty similar to brass in terms of how expensive it is, but I would say it's slightly more difficult to work with. It can patina over time uh, and also come out a bit green if you leave it. So quite tricky to work with, but if you're really set on copper, give it a go and see how it works. The next is one of my favorites, as you can tell, which is brass. So brass is uh, a really nice heavy material, easy to machine and gets a lovely patina over time. Um, and it just feels really nice and soft. So that's a really great material to use and to try and it should be relatively cheap as well. Finally, the most expensive one that I've ever used is sandblasted titanium. Sandblasted titanium is an amazing material. It catches the light. Positive side is incredibly strong. Uh, it looks awesome. On the negatives, it's very expensive and also it can pick up fingerprint marks over time. So. One of those things that if you're dead set on using titanium, give it a go, but brace yourself because it's going to cost quite a lot of money. So that simple step of you taking your design and thinking about what materials you want to use for it is going to elevate it just from a simple 3D print to something you'd be happy to sell or give to someone as an amazing, unique Christmas gift. So you have your design and you know what material you're going to make it from. Now we need to figure out who we're going to pay to machine this up for us. So how do you go about finding a supplier? I remember when I worked at Dyson, I was a 23 year old engineer and I thought I was pretty good because I should be. I was working for a big company. I was engineering all these fancy products for them. And I realized I had absolutely no idea about the whole process of finding a new supplier. What do you ask them? How do you make sure they're good? I was lucky, I ended up going to China and meeting lots and lots of these different factories face to face and through that process I whistled down my list and I have a couple that I ended up using for years. Luckily for you, I've added these suppliers to the description in this video. So if you are serious about doing this, I'll teach you exactly how to take your design, your materials and ask them for quotations on how much it's gonna to be to CNC your products to get you like this. In terms of what you can include in the email, you're just going to say, I want this design in the step files included. I would like these materials. Once you send it off, they'll give you a quotation and get your quotation in one, 10, and maybe 25 units. If you have some special features, like you need to add a knurling or you want to add a thread, for example, then you'll need to make an engineering drawing. But if you can't do an engineering drawing, just send a sketch. Um, to explain where it needs to be and what are the dimensions for that. The good thing about CNC is the more you order, the cheaper it gets and you don't have to pay any upfront costs when you're placing the order to start with, which means you can get going for less than $100 typically. And the satisfaction of holding something in your hand that you know you've designed has been CNC'd from a block of brass is pretty awesome. So I'd recommend giving it a go and trying it out yourself. The next logical step you might think when you've created your own design and given it to your friends and family and they absolutely love it, you might think, well, maybe I could start a business selling these things. And that's exactly what I did. So if you are thinking that, you have to watch this video because it's my top three big mistakes that I made when doing this for a full-time professional business and you'll get a lot of insights there. Otherwise, hit the like button and subscribe. There'll be loads more subjects like this in the future. Cheers.